So the very first item I ended up buying off of a dealer right when I got there and he was still unloading his stuff may be the best buy that whole day. Like I said, that day, that day was not a good day for the flea market. Didn't do really well, but he had this little drill press sitting there and I took one look at it and I thought to myself, that sure looks like a do more sensitive drill press or high precision drill press. And sure enough, it is. It's a, uh, it's a do more model 8226 so this is a 17,000 rpm drill press and uh these are these trade for decent money um he had no idea that that was the case i'm sure because he took my offer my one and only offer of 15 bucks for it because cord the plug is cut off the cord end which is not a good sign that might be an indication that the thing is junk but i just couldn't resist it actually looks like the table is in pretty decent shape one hole right in the middle still got a drill bit in it it spins freely and in case anybody was wondering about what the label looked like well i went to strip the insulation back to put a new plug on it and discovered that this insulation on this wiring is shot. It's very dry and brittle. Any bending of the wire just causes it to crack off. So I was going to cut back further to see, you know, if I could find some good wire, but I kind of doubt it because if I do this, I can hear that. That crackling, that's the telltale sign. And I could do that all the way up to the to the drill press uh, head of hair and it still does it so I'm gonna have to replace this entire cord so uh, to make my life easier I'm gonna just remove this entire head off of the post the wiring's kind of tucked up inside there but we got a screw here with this um, strain relief clamp I think if I take that screw out hopefully I can get enough of the wire out to splice onto there so this is a riot um the way that they put this together the ground wire goes to a eye terminal that is held to the body or the frame here with a screw that goes through a tapped hole in the frame so <laughs> it's a regular screw it's not a it's not like a uh, quarter inch uh, screw that I could put a, uh, a small wrench on to get out. So, you know, obviously the problem is how do you get your screwdriver on that screw that's way inside there. And it looks to me like if I take the toggle switch out right here, drop it out of its hole, I might be able to actually get a screwdriver through the hole that's left behind to get onto that screw, but that's kind of a, that's a wild setup there. Yeah, I know, don't tell anybody I use those. Yep, that's the trick. As if that isn't tricky. What will I go to have to put this thing back together? I keep a box of scrap cords that are cut off of various things over the years. They're still in decent condition. I uh, just looked through there and found the three-prong one here that has uh, the same... OD cable as what was in there so that I can not have to worry about the strain relief giving me trouble. And then uh, it's a little bit shorter. You know, that's probably about half the length of the one that was on here. But the one that was on here was extra long. I don't really need one that long. This can just plug into the bench. And quite frankly, I already own one of these, so I'm probably going to end up selling this anyways. If somebody else wants to change the plug again later, they can. All right. Found the right size eye terminal the reason why they use an eye terminal in an application like this is because if the screw were to loosen up 
if you just use one of those little fork ones, sure, it'd be a lot easier to get it on, but then, uh, you know, if the screw loosens up, this could actually come off and you wouldn't know it. And then if you ended up with a short in the motor casing to the frame, it would the frame could be ungrounded and it could be an electrical shock hazard. All right, I got my uh, splices all done. I've got the ground connection all done. Just got to get this toggle switch back into position. In order to make the on side of the switch face up because of this little metal placard thing that says on and off on it which is keyed to the thing by a keyway I'd have to put the switch 180 degrees around seems kind of odd to me but well, I guess that's what they want because it's it can only go in that one way I was taking it off again to see whether or not if I flipped it over if it if it had the words reversed so in other words, right now on is facing down below. If I want on to face up, the switch has to actually be moved around 180 degrees, uh, which you can do. All right. False alarm. Well, all right, I don't have to tighten that up completely right now. I can, I can test without doing that. I can even test without even putting this, putting this under the strain relief, but I'm feeling lucky <laughs> so I am going to uh, go ahead and get this under the strain relief anyways this also is kind of a weird way that they design this getting to this screw for the strain relief the motor is in the way right this whole nose part I don't know if this I mean, this comes off, obviously, so I don't know if that screw is made to be tightened and loosened with this removed, but I don't want to take this apart if I don't have to. This actually doesn't sound bad, spinning it by hand. We'll know in a moment. Just get this garbage off the bench. I don't know why. It's not unusual for my bench to be a complete pigsty. All right, switch is off, plugged in, oh, got a bad brush or dead spot on the commutator maybe, see what's happening when I turn this on. Nothing happens. I gave it a little spin by hand and it started to fire up. So <clears throat> what's happening there is this is a this this type of motor is a series circuit. So current has to flow through one brush um, through the uh, uh, forgot the terminology here. The part that spins. It's an induction motor and then through the other brush back to the circuit oh hold on guys scam likely this could be good hi this is linda davis from debt free america well the reason i'm calling you is because after the economic shutdown the fdca is actually eliminating consumer credit card debt completely this sounds good so would you be interested in learning more about this program uh yes please hold just one second and let me get you transferred to my senior manager they will be able to help you oh, okay good. yeah okay that's the good we're gonna get the senior manager this this is good your call is very important to us mm -hmm. you'll be transferred to the next available agent that guy always sounds like he's on helium. Beautiful music. Five oh eight area code eight six four prefix. So it looks just like a cell phone number in my area, um, which is it's spoofing. Basically, they're. They're able to fake the phone number on the caller ID. This is an internet generated call. Thank you for holding the line. This is Sean from Dead Relief. We have the pleasure of speaking with. 
Yeah, sure. This is uh, John. Hey, John. How are you? Good, good. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you for asking. He hung up on me. Something. Uh, he was checking. He was probably checking the number that they dialed. They might already have me flagged because I've messed with enough of these guys already. The way he kind of slowly said that slow cadence of, oh, I'm fine, thank you for asking, makes me think that he wasn't really paying attention to the conversation and he was diddling his keyboard to pull up some information on what was dialed. That's too bad. I was, I had a, I had a whole plan for, for Sean. Sean. It's always a very Anglo-Saxon sounding name. But it's always some guy who's got an accent that sounds nothing like he's a Sean or a John or a Fred. Oh, okay. Where was I? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was talking about brushes. I, well, I was unplugging this for safety when I get interrupted by Sean. Oh, yeah. Note to self. Stuff flies out. Be careful. So we get this little cap and the spring and then there's a brush in there like so you can see the curved end there that's what rubs up against the commutator is that what we call that thing you motor geniuses out there can correct me oh did i say that sarcastically i didn't mean to Taking this off slower so I can see what order it goes in, but it's, as I suspected, the cap with the pin down into the spring. Duh. The spring. The brush. So we have, these wear down. So these are wear items. So we replace these when they get worn out. So these little suckers right here are the brushes. And these wear out over time and need to be replaced. But these actually still have some meat on them. So I suspect that our problem is that the, uh, <clears throat> the commutator, I'm going to continue to call it that because nobody's here to stop me, um, is dirty. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to assume that this is how this comes out. All right, so I was out of frame when I started to take this apart, but basically I took out this big long screw here and I'm about to take out this big long screw here. Because, again, there's nobody here to stop me. Oh, no. oh, that's unfortunate. Not what I expected to happen. See, there's no cap or anything that comes off the back here. This has to come out this way. pressed into a bearing back there or what? See, that definitely moved out so that I was going in the right direction here. There you go. Bearing pressed in the back there. Bearing feels good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this area right here very carefully. This is, um, I think this is called a commutator, but I'll zoom in on this. So hopefully that's focusing, but you see these little black lines? Those are actually lines of separation between these contacts. So every other one of these is tied to one end of a winding and then and so on if that makes sense it's all these windings here it's all this copper wire you can see in here it's all covered with this varnish and then these laminated cores right here 
are what all of these wires are wound around. And then you've got another winding <clears throat> called the armature, I believe, in here. Two of them. So if my induction motor theory, memory of induction motor theory, serves me correctly, the uh, current flows in through one of these windings, through a brush, through the commutator, through these windings, back out through the commutator, through the other winding, and back out to the line. We all got that? Good. Not really much to see here. So I'm going to clean this with some electrical cleaner. And somewhere I have a, there we go, a lint free little, uh, rag. I don't have to worry about these uh, fibers snagging on anything. You know, if I use a paper towel, I get all those little cotton fibers on everything. Ow! Pinch my finger in there. I really should have made note of where those screws are. I'm guessing they're going to go right through the armature windings here somewhere. Uh, I can't believe I'm going to have to take this out again because I can't see where the screws go. They weren't on the sides here, were they? Yeah, I don't know. I looked at the one on the other side on the magnification. It did look like maybe it was centered, so I think I might have just been dreaming. Okay, so... <clears throat> let's see... Which is off. Plug this in. That doesn't sound good. Something cooking in there. This is starting to look to me like this thing's worth all of the 15 bucks that I paid for it. <laughs> no, I mean not worth it all right so <laughs> these springs fell off of these screws when i pulled them out and didn't notice it so these springs have to go in there but i was just looking online and uh it turns out the, the brushes for these are pretty cheap oddly enough i don't know why but people are trying to sell used brushes set of two for eight dollars and then they want 1478 shipping so basically looking at you know uh, like 20 almost 23 bucks for a used set of brushes you can go to the do more website they still make this drill press um, and it's got a new model number but it's the same basic version of this drill press its list price is like nine hundred and thirty five dollars now <laughs> but you can buy the replacement brushes direct from do more for under eight dollars a piece so for less than 16 bucks well you got to pay shipping though so i don't know how much the shipping would be on two little brushes i mean they could mail them to you but even if they decided to ups them or whatever tack another eight or nine bucks on i mean why wouldn't you buy brand new brushes but as luck would have it there's somebody here who's got a pair of brand new probably old stock brushes on um, that they want 10 bucks for and they're only asking four bucks for shipping them because they can first class mail them, which makes sense. Why do you have to hose somebody on shipping for something that is this tiny and fits in an envelope, right? Right. So we're going to buy these now. Hell, and by the way, they're describing these brushes as being for a do-more hand grinder because I can almost guarantee you that my die grinders in there probably use the same brushes, and that's why. So if I could... If, I, if this guy had more pairs, I would probably buy a couple of them. Have them, you know, have them for spares for my other grinders.
here's what <laughs> here's what I've been doing. I put it back together with the springs in there to see if that would make a difference. That didn't make a difference. I took it apart again and I looked at those brushes more closely. I looked particularly at the end of the brushes under magnification. I didn't like the way they looked. So what I did was I purposely actually broke off the ends of the brushes. And by doing that, I'm exposing fresh new carbon. And then I put the brushes back in. And when I first started it, of course, it was running very poorly, but that's to be expected because the brushes have to basically wear in to the point where that square or flat face of that brush is hitting that curved commutator. You know, it's kind of like hitting hitting the curved commutator and eventually the commutator will actually wear that brush to the shape of the commutator. So I ran it like that and it just continuously got better and better and better and now it does this. <laughs> It's making a liar out of me it was running like that and then it suddenly went up to full rpm and was running perfectly so i thought maybe i had solved the issue here so i don't know i ordered the new brushes we'll see what happens when they come in but i think there might be something else going on here oh see that look no. <laughs> if it could be bearing related That seems normal now, but will it restart? Now I know you might be thinking, boy, it seems to be bogging down. But keep in mind, this drill bit that's in here is considered downright large compared to what this drill press is designed to actually be doing. This is more for like really fine detail work. Well, I'm satisfied for now until the new brushes come in.